to the Pimp Your Brilliance podcast with Monique Malcolm, a show about creative people leveraging their brilliance to create their own opportunities. I aim to show you what's really possible when you shut down the chorus of fear and lean into your genius zone. You can learn more about this show and subscribe for updates by visiting keepchasingthestars.com backslash podcast. Hey, Star Chasers. This episode of Pimp Your Brilliance is brought to you by the Visionary Journal. The Visionary Journal is a goal-setting guide, mini vision board, and day planner. It provides a simple structure to help you break your goals into actionable steps that you can integrate into your daily life. For more information and to order your own copy of the Visionary Journal, visit keepchasingthestars.com backslash visionary journal. This is episode 19. For more information or for show notes, you can find them at keepchasingthestars.com backslash 19. Hey guys, I'm back with another interview, and this week I am talking with Arsha Jones. And if you don't know Arsha, then you definitely need to. You need to get on the internet and look her up right away because she is such a brilliant entrepreneur and she is the definition of pimp your brilliance. So let me tell you a little bit about her. So Arsha Jones is a creative soul with a penchant for marketing, sales, pop culture, technology, and social media. And as an emerging leader in the e-commerce industry, she has built multiple million dollar brands that have been featured in or on media outlets like BuzzFeed, The Washington Post, Black Enterprise, Fox, CBS, and TV One. She also has her personal brand, buildbrandlaunch.com, where she teaches other people how to turn their passions into profit with physical products. So she's a physical product seller. She has multiple e-commerce brands and she's doing really well. But the thing that I like about Arsha is she's a serial entrepreneur through and through. So she has these ideas and she takes them and runs with them. And we talk about how she decides like what brand is, uh, what idea is good enough to actually build a brand around. But more than that, I love her philosophy on business, which largely revolves around like, this is my journey. This is my path. I'm going to do it my way and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And I feel like that's so inspiring. So this episode is perfect for you. If one, you have an e-commerce brand, if you love just great business women and great business stories, and if you want like some real honest truth about how it feels to run these brands and, you know, some of the necessary sacrifices and things that she had to do to make this work. This is definitely an episode for you. So get your notepads and your pens and let's do it. Hey, Arsha, welcome to the show. Hey, Monique, how's it going? It's going well. I'm so excited to have you on the show because I feel like this has been like a long time coming. I've been saying like, you're going to be on the show, we're going to be on the show. I'm super excited that you are here and that you're going to be talking with us today. So to get started, can you give us a bit of your background and let everybody know how you got started? Okay, sure. Um, My name is Arsha Jones and I am the co-owner of Capital City and we sell Capital City Mumbo Sauce. I'm also the owner of an online lifestyle brand called Tease in the Trap and we sell pop culture items, t-shirts, bags, mugs, um, things like that, that are uh, kind of cold culture related. And then I have a personal brand called Brand Build Launch, which I help um, e-commerce entrepreneurs get up and started with their online businesses. How did I get started? Um, well, it's a long, I mean, I guess it seems like a long time away, but <laughs> I started as a, I was just a web designer and um, I first started my first blog in about 2009 when I was designing mainly for other people. I really didn't have a website of my own aside from an online portfolio and I would get the same questions over and over about how to start a blog, how to buy a domain, how to find a theme, how to set up, um, you know, your hosting or whatever. And so I started with a blog called Brand Bill Sell, which I would post all this information and help people get started, uh, you know, with their own online businesses. And it was like an affiliate link uh, website. So every time someone like signed up for domains or things like that, I would get like a little commission. And so from there, I just kind of fell in love with building businesses online because I saw that it was a greater opportunity 
for me there. From that blog, I started making about a thousand dollars a month in passive income. And I thought, wow, I just, you know, this is pretty good. This is going well, you know, and how can I diversify this? Because, you know, if I can make a thousand dollars a month with this blog and and I just added another five hundred to a thousand dollars a month doing something, selling a product. Wow, I could really like you know be doing okay, you know. In addition to me already have a job and stuff. So that's kind of how I started really considering online being a place where I could probably do well. All right, so you named three different brands, and you were <laughs> yes. one person, and that's something that I find so impressive about you is the fact that you run all these brands and you're really transparent about how you're doing this, how you're getting this done. So tell us, like, how do you juggle all of this? Um, well, it's just, it's a, well, it's two things. First of all, I have a team. They're just quiet (laughs) in the background. Um, my husband helps me, um, daily. He manages the warehouse and the operations that goes on with, uh, keeping up daily with orders, um, making sure deliveries come in and go out in a timely manner. And then I have an online team, which helps me with customer service, managing my stores. Um, But really, kind of what people don't understand is that I didn't start all these things at the same time, you know? I'm able to do it all because I started one and then I built, I helped build a team that could manage it without me having to be such an integral part of the daily operations. And then I move on to something else. So because of that, I'm able to kind of juggle a few things at one time just because I have people helping me in the background. Oh, and I I love that you pointed that out. I was actually going to ask you about your support system and your team later on. But since we're here, let's let's talk about that, because I think that it's important that you made that distinguishment like that, that you let people know that I have a team. This is not just me, Mm -hmm. because I think when people get started in business, especially e-commerce or whatever they do online, Um, there's this feeling like, oh, I have to compete with this person. I have to compete with that person. And a lot of times I'm telling people like, do you know these people have teams? Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's not just them. (laughs) It's really not. And just because um, you don't hear about them, like most of my team, they aren't interested in being known or having their name in the spotlight. You know, they are, they were very hard and I'm very appreciative and thankful to be working with them, but they are not, um, you know, if they wanted to speak up, they could. Like, us not like, <laughs> I'm holding them hostage or anything. <laughs> but um, for the most part, they just, they like what they do. So they aren't um, kind of out there and loud and talking. Um, they're just doing the work, you know. So, um, so yeah, I have a team, an online team, which consists of uh, four people. And then I have an in-office team, which is about two or three people. Uh, so there is, so it's quite a few people here that like, Managed online, keeps things running offline and orders going out. So it's definitely a team. Teamwork makes the dream work around here. Yes, yes, 100 percent. So let me ask you this about your team. How did you find people that that could do the work that you wanted them to do? And do you have any advice for how you built that team? Um, well, first I started kind of small and I kind of, I decided kind of what was the biggest struggle for me as, as I, as I grew. And that means that I had to hire first, uh, people that would do the things that I really disliked doing, you know, and for me, that was customer service. Like I'm really great when it comes to creative and um, visionary and leadership and coming up with great ideas. But when it comes to having to um, research problems and sit and hold hands and um, and do it on a daily basis, that is when I start to like it becomes too much for me to do, you know, because it's just like more of the same over and over. And so it became just harder and harder for me to keep up with daily emails, responding to customers, following up, answering questions, um, some of the same questions over and over again. (laughs) So I really just reached out into my own network. You know, customer service is a fairly straightforward job. I just needed someone to answer the emails, respond in a timely fashion and get issues resolved. You know, and since I had, um, 
you know, so many friends in like the blogger uh, kind of circles, it wasn't really hard to find someone who was capable of doing that. So I really just reached out to my um, my own network and my own friends. And I hired um, a friend that I knew uh, starting off uh, tell me what customer service. So mm-hmm. it's really helpful when you join networks or surround yourself with people who are online and doing um, lots of different things, because if they aren't willing, if they aren't in a position to help you, they will typically have a network themselves of people that they can refer you to. So that's always helpful. Hmm, Those are really good tips. So tell me, what does a typical day to day for you look like? (laughs) <laughs> well, um, <laughs> depends on what day, <laughs> but for the most part, I get up and, um, my husband, um, kind of gets up a little earlier than I do. And he comes uh, to the warehouse first cause he has to kind of open it up for, um, the warehouse workers to get in. And then I, I get the kids, we both kind of share getting the kids out the door and then I will, uh, <laughs> then I'll make my way to the warehouse uh, shortly after that. And then I, first thing I do is I kind of check emails and make sure like <laughs> no fires <laughs> have happened since yesterday. Sometimes there are um, like this morning. So I have to sit and just <laughs> answer emails and, and um, from my team and they'll let me know what's going on, what needs to be addressed right now. And, and I'll assess um, the priority of my day based on that now. You know, so and then and then I still have like my own list of things to do. So I just kind of um, address their their urgent concerns first and then I move on to the things that I need to do for myself. And some of that requires, you know, time in the warehouse uh, days like this. I have interviews and then like right after this, I will go and um, have a few things to do in the warehouse. The rest of my work, it will typically be done like online and on the computer. So. So do you have any like time management tips that you swear by or like schedule management things that you just like, <laughs> this is how you get um, it done? Um, no, because I'm all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so um, but for me, the what helps me is I put everything on my calendar. So like if, if it's not on my calendar, it's not real, you know, <laughs> because... <laughs> I rely so heavily on my calendar that I like I will forget like even if I talk to you at 12 and we say okay let's let's you know have another call at two I have to put that I will not remember in two hours I told you I'm gonna call you back I have to put it on my in my um, calendar so I really swear by having my calendar organized with everything that I need to do um and you know and 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 when you reach out to me kind of like you did if I have to say the words I'll put this on my calendar <laughs> otherwise <laughs> otherwise i don't know what happens like so it's just that that is how i stay organized um on a weekly basis is just putting everything on my calendar as soon as i find it out as soon as i agree that way there's a less of a chance that i will forget no and you know what that's real because that's that's one of my best tips too mm-hmm. if it doesn't go on my calendar like i couldn't do this podcast without that calendar yeah i'm that sure i'm sure i'm that sure thing, like I would be missing calls and uh, it would just go off the rails really fast. So you guys take notes, look for a calendar. Do you (laughs) use a specific one? Because I use Google Calendar, but some people have like special apps or special calendars. Is there like I have um, Google Calendar um, because it helps, especially with me having um, a family. So like, you know, my personal and business stuff goes on there. And then I can also add like my husband. And then when I have appointments and things for the kids, I can add them to the calendar and then they'll get a notification. So G um, Gmail and Google Calendar has just really probably the central place where I um, get all of my, uh, you know, add everything. Now there are like specific apps um, that I'll use that work in conjunction with Gmail and Google Calendar. Um, But for the most part, it's Gmail. Yeah. All right. So Gmail it is. Mm -hmm. It gets the vote. So let's talk about you being like a multi-passionate person that runs several brands like How did you know? Because you mentioned like you do one thing at a time. So how do you know when it's time, like an idea is good enough that you are going to start another brand for it? 
Um, well, for the most part, um, I mean, I'm like anybody who is a creative. Um, I come up with great ideas. <laughs> At least I think they are <laughs> all the time, you know. And so but to kind of get myself in a mode where I am not um, just kind of chasing a moving target and always starting new things without really giving it thought, I will I will do a couple things first. I will buy the domain name. I will s- set up an email address and I will secure all the social media handles, right? And then I will stop. <laughs> I will, and then I will come up with a general plan. I wouldn't even call it a plan. I don't know, like an outline of ideas and concepts and put it in Evernote. And then I will just let it sit because the reality of it is if it's a really great idea, then if it'll be a great idea six months from now. So if six months from now I'm still interested and I still think it's a great idea and no one else has done it either, I'll say, okay, this might be something that I need to move forward with. Mm, I love that. And you know what? You, I don't know. I think it was at Blogalicious 2015 that I saw you speak and you gave one of the best tips that I still use to this day. It was about using name checker to get all of the domain names. <laughs> yes, I still do. I still do. I do not like to waste my time when it comes to domain <laughs> names, meaning I don't like to, you know, how you like come up with these bright ideas and then you think of the domain name and you like you emotionally (laughs) fall in love with it. And then you either a go and find out that the domain is taken or you go B find out the domain is free, but all the social media handles are taken (laughs) either. And they haven't like tweeted since like 2007, you know? And so, um, it's kind of heartbreaking, you know, cause now you like your crush now. And so, so I just, I don't like to fall in love with domain names until I know everything is absolutely clear. Like I won't even, yeah. So just to save my heartache, cause I'm one of those people who like, I like all of my domain names and, uh, you know, social media usernames to be just, um, you know, have a, a somewhat of consistency, you know, like I don't want it to be like, you know, Arsha Jones, one, two, three on Twitter. And then on Instagram, um, you know, Jones, <laughs> Arsha, five, seven, nine or something. You know what I no, mean? I like, totally I understand that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I'm not one of those people. Like that's weird to me. So <laughs> I'm not judging anyone else. I'm just saying it's not okay for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just like to use name checker uh, just to make sure that um, everything is all of the names that I want are free and clear before I move forward. Yep. So oh, I have to ask, how many domain names do you own? Oh, um, I don't know. I want to <laughs> say, I actually don't buy. I, I mean, well, you know, I guess uh, it's all relative. I was going to say I don't buy that many. Like, I know I don't have a hundred. So, but maybe, you know, I think I maybe 30 or something, but maybe that's a lot. I don't know. So, <laughs> I don't know how many I have either, but I'm thinking I'm yeah. probably somewhere in the 20 to 30 range too. So, yeah. yeah. Know. And then I let them. I let them fall off. Like if I don't use them in like two or three years and I know that um, they're probably, I won't use them. I, I let them go too. So I don't like, like hoard them. I mean, if it was something like really good, I might hoard it and try to sell it or something. But for the most part, the, the domain names I have, nobody's going to want them. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I feel like that's like a, a creative entrepreneur, like inside joke mm-hmm. that we all have so many domain names that we are not yeah. using. <laughs> they're just sitting. Yeah. Exactly. So it's better safe than sorry. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So (laughs) I want to ask you about having your business and you have these businesses. They've been successful. I mean, I've been seeing you pop up everywhere. I've been seeing you speak. I've been seeing articles about you. So many things happening. So your brands are growing, but you still have a day job. And I would love if you would share like some of your reasons behind that. Not that you have to explain yourself, but I think that. Sure, sure, sure. No, I mean, it's not a secret. No, I know it's not a secret. But I I think that there's this pressure that people feel like you grow your business and you got to quit your job immediately. And I want them to hear it from somebody who's really successful. Like you don't have to do that if you don't want to. 
Yeah. Well, for me, it was just um, I, I didn't really have a choice. Like I have kids, I have a husband and we all, uh, you know, were on my um, health insurance and, you know, like six people, we, we have four children. So that would be six people on my health insurance. You know, maybe my thought process would be different if I was single and didn't have any kids. But like at the end of the day, they're my first responsibility, you know, and um, I think people don't really understand um, the ups and downs with uh, entrepreneurship. Like, you know, you can have these months that you're doing really great and then you can have these months that you're not doing really great. And I'm just, I wasn't willing to take a chance that that would happen, especially when I have kids that I have to care for. Um, and I think that people should really um, think about that before they um, take that leap. I know for me, I said to myself, like once I left my job, I, I didn't want to come back for any reason, you know? And, and I know a lot of times people leave their jobs and they, and they, and they have to come back and find a new position because they're low on money. Like, I don't want to do that. You know, once I'm done, I'm done. And, um, but I think that people, I don't know. They fall in love with this illusion on what entrepreneurship is. And so when you go on Instagram and you see these girls who are like, you know, their hair is done and their makeup is all perfect and they're sitting in their posh apartments or at Starbucks with their Macs and they're like we're fake working. <laughs> um, <laughs> I could I could ne- I was never intimidated or jealous by that because I something I could never relate to, like even to see me here working I'm in a warehouse and I have like warehouse clothes and I right now I have on some Uggs and because, 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 you know, <laughs> because sometimes it gets cold in the warehouse and I have to go out there and like, I don't like my feet being cold. <laughs> and I have, you know, and I have like my head wrapped up and like, you uh, know, many times you'll see me if you come in when I'm working, I'll have on a smock that has paint all over it. And my hands will be dirty. And, you know, so I just, I just had to, number one, not look at these images that were portrayed on social media as how I needed, um, as a barometer of how I judge myself. You know, I said that my journey isn't theirs. How I run my business isn't like how they run their business. So that means that whatever I do is the best choice for me, you know, and even though their reality or... (laughs) Or their online reality doesn't look like my real life reality, like my choices are still good. And plus, you know, I had a plan. So my plan was a little different. My plan was always to, for me to be the last person to kind of like come into the business full time. My goal was always to have a team that I could afford to pay consistently before I left, you know, and so because like it's, it's because when I left my job, I wanted that to be it, you know, and I wanted to have people in place. I wanted to have processes in place and I wanted to have be kind of rolling already forward um, with a set schedule and set things that we need to do before I was before I left. So that was what was important to me, building a team before I left. Mm. I'm just over here. I just want to hug you. <laughs> Everything that you said, like I felt Thanks. that. Um, and I, I'm glad that you shared that because I, I, to everything that you said about the way that social media, um, some people portray how this all works. It's just, that's not the reality. And it's a lot harder than I think people yeah. realize. But if you let Instagram sell you the dream, you're going to think that you are sitting with that MacBook in Starbucks, sipping lattes and it's cute, but it's it's not always cute. <laughs> it's it's really not, and that, and that's and if that's how they run their business, that's fine. You know, it's just you have to do, you have to just you have to define how you run your own business and be clear and certain and confident that the decisions you're making are what's best for you. I just I don't have the luxury of sitting in Starbucks and. Um, sitting on my MacBook, sipping lattes. I don't have that luxury, you know, but, but I'm also doing well, you know what I mean? So like clearly the path I chose for me is, is working, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's working. It definitely is working. So would you tell me about like, what are some of your challenges? Like you have these businesses, you've been doing well, but you know, everybody has a challenge. So what have 
been some of yours? Um, some of our challenges, I mean, there are a few, I mean, you know, we're a small business and we don't come from, uh, families, uh, you know, full of entrepreneurs. So much of this, we've just kind of learned by trial and error. So one thing that I have, uh, one, one thing I personally struggle with is um, delegating, making sure that I'm passing off enough tasks to my team as opposed to trying to take so much on um, alone. And that is um, a con. I'm, I'm constantly checking in um, with myself to make sure that I am delegating more. Uh, I mean, you know, other other issues that we've come in that we've had um, as we grow is, you know, some issues that many small businesses will have with how to bring in more money, um, especially when you get these larger orders and things and making sure that you're, you always have this certain amount of cash flow coming in and going out of the business. So, I mean, so it's basically the same struggles that most small businesses will have. And what do you feel like have been your keys to success? Um, really, the key to success is uh, <laughs> being resourceful. Like, like, when, like I said, when you don't have um, people that you can lean on, number one, Google becomes your best friend. Like, you know, I can pretty much find anything that I'm looking for on Google. I don't <laughs> I don't know how people can't find stuff on there. <laughs> and then <laughs> number two, it's um, just seeking out information from people who you believe have um, attained a certain amount of success, meaning um, that I will seek out people who I believe know the information that I need to know. And I won't necessarily ask them, well, how do you do this? What I do is I'm, I build relationships so that when I do need something, I can ask. So it's really important that you build business relationships the same way you build, um, you know, regular, um, everyday girlfriend relationships. Mm, That's a really good tip. I hadn't thought about it in that way, but that's super smart. So I want to ask you about your, um, social media because you tweet and I always tell you, your tweets (laughs) make me laugh because you have like this way about letting people know, like, business this is hard yeah. but but you can still do mm-hmm. it but I also love what you've been able to do with tease in the mm-hmm. trap for social media so can you share a little bit about that or like what's your biggest social media tip for somebody who's getting started um the biggest social media tip I have is to um just be yourself like and I know it sounds kind of like just basic you know <laughs> This basic social media one on one, but um, really, when people interact with me on my personal Twitter, you're really um, talking to me, and this is like my real voice and how I speak. But also, much of that relays on to how I manage teas in the trap. Um, the posts that I make, I don't just post things just because. Okay, I think they'll be highly engaging. Like I post things that I think are funny, you know, <laughs> or <laughs> I post things that I that I you know vibe with. And so what ends up happening is that I draw people into the page who kind of are to share that same type of humor and vibe, you know? So it's like, if you really want to attract um, the customers who would like your products, show more of yourself, be passionate and be consistent, you know? So for your teasing, I know that you have your personal trader, but do you also do the Instagram for teasing the trap or does one of your team members do that? I do that now, but I'm should be. Um, I, I I I delegate it every now and then. I mean, like, <laughs> trying to let it go, but not really. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things that I I could let it go, but they just they don't run it like me, you know. And so I'm gonna be. Uh, but I'm gonna try to let that go. Uh, actually, had someone starting um, this week, so uh, so let's see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep an eye on it. So yeah. Of, all the lessons that you've learned on your journey so far, what would you say is your biggest lesson? The biggest lesson is uh, not falling into what others believe entrepreneurship should look like. Um, I have this a unique ability to follow people online, um, admire what they've done, 
but in no way do I feel bad because I either am not where they are or haven't achieved everything that I've wanted to achieve. Um, I use those people as inspiration to push me forward. So, but that comes with a certain level of self-awareness and self-confidence and knowing that one day you'll reach these goals. So it's really about, you know, having enough self-confidence to know that, these people that you're looking at on Instagram, one day that can be you if you just keep working. Oh my gosh. You're like my Oprah. You're like the e-commerce Oprah. Like I could just listen <laughs> to you give these wisdoms all day and just soak it in. Um, Thank you. So we're getting towards the end and I'd like to end the show with two final questions. So the first one is the Pimp Your Brilliance Action Challenge. So that's you offering your top three tips for someone who is looking to brand, build, and launch a business this year. Um, top three tips. So the first one is to join a community. You know, even if you're not ready, even if you are um, even thinking about creating something, selling something, building something, join a community. Because one thing that happens is um, that you your juices, your creative juices will start to flow once you surround yourself with people who are already making things happen, you know? And so even, like I said, even if you're not ready, just start start seeking out some communities of um, entrepreneurship communities, um, because I don't know, like something magical happens and something rubs off on you. And next thing you know, you like, you are like empowered, you know, you empowered to do more, to research more. And um, it pushes you forward to make something happen for yourself. Number number two is um, be realistic, you know, be realistic about your expectations. I never started any of my businesses with the idea that, oh, I was going to build a million dollar brand. Like I remember setting, um, starting Capital City and thought, wow, if I had just an extra five hundred dollars a month, you know, somebody to like take my kids to the amusement park and pay a bill, I would be fine. You know what I mean? Like I never even considered that we'd be a million dollar business. And so what happens is that my expectations have always been in check. And so now um, my expectations have have grown since we have um, done better. But starting out, I just wanted to set some reasonable expectations. So, no, I didn't jump out the gate saying I want to sell, you know, $10,000 worth of product next month. No, you know, realistic expectations that you can actually achieve will help you actually like mentally prepare for the next goal that you need to reach. Um, number three is never stop learning. One thing that I that has made me a successful entrepreneur is that I listen, I ask questions and I try to learn more. Like never think that, oh, I got it. Oh, I know it all. I know this um, or this is how I do it. So this is fine for me. No, always be fluid, always be able to pivot and always be seeking out better information, you know, because especially you know, if you have a business, especially if it's online, online changes day to day, month to month, year to year. How we did business online two years ago won't be how we do business online two years from now. So always being flexible enough to know that you don't know everything while at the same time always seeking out people um, or books or information that can help you learn more. Okay. And my final question, speaking of books, is what are you currently reading or what have you read recently that was really good and blew your mind? Um, you know, that's one of the things that I said I was going to start doing more of for 2018 because people don't really, people don't, um, sometimes people don't realize that I'm just, I'm not a necessarily a traditional business person. So I really don't read any business books. I, <laughs> I said I was going to try it out. I said I was going to try <laughs> What I learned is just I have a, a, a innate ability to just watch people and watch the blueprint that they laid out. And I just walk right behind them and do the exact same thing. But for me, um, what I'm reading right now is the E-Myth, um, the E-Myth. And uh, just just to say, you know, just tell us how to, um, 
you know, build a better um, business and take yourself out of the day to day so that you don't kind of run yourself into the ground. Uh, so, <laughs> so, um, and, you know, I've been reading this book off and on for like two years. So like, let's pray that I finish it <laughs> up like in 2018. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny. I'm the same way. I have a goal. It's so bad. I do not like to read business yeah, books. I can't stand yeah, it. Just, I mean, I try, you know, I, try, <laughs> I buy them and they just sit like dust. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, you know. I know. I do the same thing. So this is what I'm doing. That's kind of working for me right now. So I have a goal to read 12 books this year, yeah. business books. I can read any books for pleasure all day. Every morning I get okay. up and the first thing I do is I read a chapter. Whatever the book is for that month, I read an entire chapter every morning and it just makes it so much easier. And if I had to take notes or like write a, a really quick summary. Yeah, I might, I might try that because like I just, I don't know, I start glossing over. I, my, my mind starts racing. I'm like, <laughs> what am, then I got to read stuff three and four times. I'm like, what is going on? Next thing you know, I, the book is on back on the yep. shelf and, and six months later. I'm like, what happened to that book I was supposed to Oh my to gosh, read? that's the story of my life. So that's, that's what's working right now. <laughs> One chapter a morning. I can yeah. commit to that and get it done. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. So just check back with me next year to see if I got on my, um, my, my I, I finished my book for the year. I am. Oh, like, so you be finished because yeah. you've been reading it for two years. Yeah, exactly. And this is the exactly. So, <laughs> yeah, got me on record. <laughs> All right. Well, I love that. Thank you so much for everything that you shared. Okay. As I've told you many times before, I'm such a huge fan of your brands and all the stuff that you've done and what you're accomplishing and where you're going. So it was really great to have you on the show and to be able to ask you questions. And oh, thank you. Hear I appreciate you. it you know, share your story your way. So thank you again. Thank you. For coming on. Thank you, Moni. And that's it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for listening. If you love the show, make sure you grab the Be Brilliant Guide where I share the keys to success for my most popular guests. Download it at keepchasingthestars.com backslash brilliant. Now go out there and pimp your brilliance.